Welcome back to Cosmology Anonymous. I am your favorite new mama bougie vintage. And today's video is love and hip hop. Let's get it to popping because, um, well, we need to get it to popping. <laughs> I am going to be eating, so you can consider this a mukbang. I know some people weren't happy with me in the last one because they I was smacking my mouth a whole lot. Uh, because I was eating the yogurt. I don't know if I smack my mouth on a regular basis, but I will tell you this when I was editing that video I was very irritated. So I complete I tried to cut out as much as I could But I completely understand if you're not here for the smack be smack smack. Okay. Sorry about it Anyway, right now I'm eating applesauce. Listen bitch applesauce <laughs> I go through jars of applesauce. I go through a jar of applesauce every, like every two days, maybe every three days. So I'll buy like the Mott's jar and then I just end up going through it because I eat it with premium crackers. So good. Anyway. Mmm, it's fake acting here. Mama D acts like Nurse Bay is coming over. But really, Scrappy's at the door with balloons. He's back in town for good. Mama D is doing the absolute most at this scene. She's like covering her body parts. Like, it's dumb. <laughs> in confessional, Scrappy is so funny. Scrappy and Jock are probably the funniest people on the show. Anytime they're in confessional, it's a fucking riot. Mama D is, is confiding in Scrappy about Ernest. Mm -mm. Or about Ernest moving back into the house because, as we know, he went on a crack binge. <laughs> But apparently he's all better now. He just had a minor slip up and um, he's ready to move back in. So she's not really sure what to do about that. But then she moves on to talk about how she's happy that Scrappy, you know, is taking care of business and that he married Bambi. She feels some kind of way that they eloped. But because of her situation with Ernest, she's happy that you know, Scrappy is putting Bambi first. So of course, Scrappy is super excited that Bambi married him. He finally got his shit together, put her first, and he said that he's looking for a four bedroom house and he basically is announcing to his mom that him and Bambi are having a baby. I already knew that Bambi was pregnant because there was a picture on Instagram. There, it's already been announced on Instagram, so it came out before the show actually aired. Mama D is, of course, super excited. Scrappy's not really supposed to be telling Mama D that they're having a baby, but he had to tell. It's his mother, okay? And we all know he's a mama's boy. Like, he's not gonna not tell Mama D. So this next scene is... Tokyo and Tobias at the studio. We get a little preview of Tokyo's music and it sounds so unprofessional. Like the music sounds like not only was it recorded in a closet with a broken door, <laughs> but it sounds like, it just sounds cheap. Like it sounds like lower than mixtape quality, you know? I don't know who's engineering it, but it, it needs some work, okay? At the studio session, Blue Da Vinci pops. Oh, she was picking songs that she's going to be performing at her listening party. Blue Da Vinci ends up showing up, and they do a little bit of a kiki about Keely and whatnot. Then they end up telling Blue Da Vinci about Bachi, K Bachi, and which is Keely's new boyfriend. When they bring up that it's Bachi, he basically pages Tobias and he's like, wait a second. Why didn't you tell me that she was dating him when we were all hanging out together? I'm confused. And then Tobias was kind of like, he look a little shook, honey. But he was just like, honestly, I wasn't even thinking about that at that time. Like, it wasn't even, a, I wasn't even, you know, that didn't, you know, whatever. Blue actually says he doesn't really care that uh, Bachi is dating Keely. That's not really what his beef is he just wants to see his child so of course Tokyo invites him to the album release party because she's being messy um, I actually thought that Carly Red was gonna invite him but this works too blue is actually wanting to go to the release party because he's hoping that he runs into Keely so that he could page that ass about the situation and figure out something so that he could see his kid so the next scene Bachi meets up with Keely at her office it looks late at night, like nobody, I don't even know, what does Keely do that she has an office? <laughs> That's what I need to know, like, 
What does Keely do that she would have an office when she literally just linked up with Mimi and Stevie for business recently? I'm confused. Anyway, Bachi wastes no time. He gets straight to the point. Okay, he gets straight to the pizzoit. He basically pages her like, why didn't you tell me that Blue Da Vinci is your baby daddy? What's up with that? When, um, when he's telling her this, or asking her this, her facial expression changed completely because she's like, whoa, like, I guess she never expected him to find out. In her confessional, she claims that he never asked her. She's like, to be fair, he never asked me who my baby father was, so I didn't tell him. But I'm just like, what? And <laughs> honestly, this whole baby daddy drama is really tiring. I'm just like, is it really that big of a deal? Like, who cares? So when she says to Bachi, you never asked, so I never felt the need to bring it up because he was a non-factor, basically. Um, Bocce said this, and I'm like, my how stupid are you? Like, I never heard anything so stupid in my life. I think he just didn't know what to say, but he said, I don't ask questions. He said, I don't ask questions, and I'm like, what? You're dating somebody and you're not going to ask some questions? And I'm just like, okay. Well, you're dumb. That's like if you're gonna have sex with somebody without a condom and you don't ask them first, like, hey, have you ever had any STDs? Hey, do you have motherfucking crabs? Like, <laughs> what do you mean you don't ask questions? Come on now, that don't make no sense. So then Keely's like to him, I don't get it, what's the big deal? Is it because I didn't tell you or is it because of who it, who, who it is? And then Bocce's like, a little bit of both, like, you know what I do for a living. You know that based on the business I'm in, it's possible that I will run into people in his circle or him, which I have. So it would be important that you tell me that because it could or could not cause friction. And so when he was talking about you know what kind of business I'm involved in, or when he started saying that, I'm just like, this was just giving me flashbacks of Yandy and Joel talking on the damn phone. And I'm just like... What the fuck is really going on? Mind you, somebody brought this to my attention the other day on Twitter, thank you. Joelle's recently got arrested for, like, gun possession and stuff, and I was just like, huh, so I was right. <laughs> Yandy and Joelle's wasn't talking about no music on that damn phone. Yandy better be careful, because she's in too deep, honey. I know street talk when I see it, and Yandy and Joelle's were not talking about music, okay? They were talking in code AF. So Keely says, you know, when we first started dating, my baby father wasn't in the picture at all. And so Bocce's like, he's forever in the picture. You guys have a child together. And I was just like, big fucking facts. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I can't see it, bitches like Keely. Honestly, this episode gave me my whole life, but we're getting there. So, of course, Keely's pressed. He's a little bit pressed. And they start bickering. So he basically says, you know what? If that's how you're going to be, we're done like there's no more to this he breaks up with her and she dismisses him like basically like tells him to get gone like she doesn't give a fuck about him um but then he also tells her that she's not invited to Tokyo's party and so she gets upset again <laughs> and accuses him of wasting her time um She's basically, she's like, you came all the way over here to tell me who my baby father is and tell me I'm not invited to Tokyo's party? Fuck off. <laughs> oh my god. So then Bachi ends up throwing shade about her scribbles on the paper, basically saying like she ain't really doing shit, she's just in this office doing nothing. Tells her God bless ya and pieces out. So in this next scene, Jock, Stevie, and Scrappy meet up to play golf. And of course, it's all dramatic. Motherfucking Scrappy is handing out cigars because he's obviously announcing his pregnancy with Bam. And so he announces that he's having a baby and <laughs> Jock is like, wait, wait, with your wife, right? <laughs> I was dying because I'm like, Honestly, on Love and Hip Hop, you can never be sure. You have to ask, especially when Kirk is out here having babies by other bitches. You got to make sure that the people are having children with their spouse, okay? He had a genuine look of concern on his face when he asked the question. <laughs> Yo, Jock is super funny. I don't care what anybody says. He is the funniest alive. 
obviously they're really happy for him. And then they ask about Erica. If she knows, and he's like, uh, we don't really talk about stuff like that, like, you know? I think their their conversations are strictly about Imani, and that's it. And of course, Stevie's broken ass brings up child support. He's like, she gonna ask you for more child support. She gonna put that child support up, and I was like, this is a big hurt. Like, <laughs> he's very mad at the child support thing. I don't feel bad for any that owes child support. When I've seen what I've seen in my lifetime, with my own battle with my dad, I don't feel bad for nanny that old child support. Pay that shit, cause n like to not pay it, and it piles up, and then they get mad when they then when they start coming after them for the lump sum. You should have been paying it, and you wouldn't be in these problems. So we don't feel bad for you. So then of course Jock starts telling them about his hair salon, and Scrappy's in the confessional like clowning Jock, but. It's all in good fun. Like, he's not hating on him. He's literally just clowning him. Like a friend would clown a friend, you know? The conversation shifts again, and they're talking about Estelita. So Stevie starts talking about the showcase, and he brings up just Britney. And the guys ask him, specifically, loud and clear, if he fucked just Britney as well. And he said, no, like, absolutely not. I have not had sex with just Britney. Why the fuck is Keely out here lying on just Britney's name? I told you guys last week, she's a trifling ass bitch. Stevie said out of his own mouth, his own pussy sucking lips, that he did not sleep with just Britney. That's what he said. So why is Keely out here saying that? And Mimi's out here fucking agreeing. <laughs> like, what? Listen, I hope just Britney hears about this and drags that bitch for filth. I hope she drags her physically. Keely's the most trifling bitch we've seen on Love and Hip Hop in a long time. Next scene is Dime is at her house and her doorbell rings and of course it's her mom. I done told y'all her mama was gonna make an appearance on the show. It was only obvious that we were building up to that. Her mom looks way older than I expected but she's a cute lady nonetheless, okay? <laughs> this scene really touched me because um, they have their differences, but they were able to talk it out so effortlessly. If only every family could talk out their differences like this. It was so beautiful. And then of course, Dime ends up telling her that she's pregnant, and so her mom was super excited because she's gonna be a grandma. I think this is her first grandbaby. So she's super excited, and they hugged it out, and her mom plans to be in the picture a lot more. I think I cried a little bit during that scene. A little, I got a little crocodile tear, like Erica Menace tear. <laughs> I got a little crocodile here going when that scene was on. Cause it was so cute. Like, ah, oh, there that whole little that scene was just cute. I really liked that. It. it bring up positive energy. But yeah, their conversation was so real and so genuine. I think they understand each other better now. And now that they're older, I don't think they'll fall out again. And her mom told her that she's really proud of her. And I think that really like made Jessica feel good because she's always felt like because she was a stripper and stuff. Her mom was kind of upset with her and didn't really support that. I don't think many parents would support their child becoming a stripper, so it was, you know. And so Jessica said now that she's a mom or going to be a mom, she understands more where her mom was coming from. So I'm really happy they squashed that shit. But it's it's nice when you hear, it's nice when your parent tells you they're proud of you, you know? Now this next scene is long as hell. I thought this was going to be the last scene of the show, but it made sense that they put it in the middle of the episode. Because it was so long, like, my note is, like, this long <laughs> versus usually it's this long for, like, a scene. It's this long, okay? It's huge. So, of course, uh, everybody's there. Carly Red is shading Jock, like, her man's not sitting right there. Don't ask. Bocce said he didn't bring Keely because he didn't want any mess, which, <laughs> with... I don't think this mess was avoidable, honey. It really wasn't. So Tokyo's in confessional, and she's like, I thought that, I thought that Bocce would have just put a muzzle on the bitch, but he put that whole bitch in the kennel. <laughs> and I was dying. I'm like, oh my god, what a metaphor. <laughs> so Blue shows up, and he's greeting everybody, and then it's time for him to greet Bocce, and... The way he greeted him, it, at first it was like, uh-oh, like it was low-key awkward, but I felt like I was watching a scene 
from like a Toronto hood man. Like when a Toronto hood man says to you, you're good, like <laughs> it's like they're trying to scoping you out, feeling the vibe. If you if it's somebody you have a ting with and they're there, but they're also with your friends, you just gotta check to see what the vibe is. So he's like, You're good, like you know. And so I was like, Oh, this is about to get ugly or what? But based on his conversation with Tokyo, you know, he said he doesn't really have a problem with bocce. So I was kind of like, okay, where is this really going to go? I'm not going to lie. I was having a little bit of an anxiety attack when this was happening. <laughs> um, so Tokyo ends up suggesting that they all go to the bar. Because she's like, I think you two need to talk. So everybody gets up, they leave, and then Blue and Bocce are there to speak. In confessional, Bocce admits that he is um, excited <laughs> that Keely didn't show up because it would be a shit show. But if you know love and hip hop, you know Keely's ass is just late to the party, okay? Oh shit, I'm using applesauce on my phone. So of course, Bocce just tells him the truth. He's like, look, I didn't know you were her baby daddy. I just found out is what it is. No disrespect to you. And so Blue tells him, you know, you're not really a threat to me like that. Like, at the end of the day, my issue is with her and not being able to see my son. I don't have an issue with you. I know you're a good dude. I wouldn't mind my son being around you. And I was like, this is some grown man stuff right here. I was so happy to see this. This this was beautiful. I was like, this is new to love and hip hop. You guys got Peter and motherfucking, what's that big meatball head name? Cisco trying to jump the table and shit. This was some grown nigga shit. I was like, I am here for this. Okay, it was it was grown and sexy. I was like, yes, okay. So then he basically just asked Bocce to like separate himself from the situation between him and his baby mama because, you know, that's their business. It has nothing to do with him. He just needs to stay out of it. And he agrees, of course. Was he gonna say no? <laughs> So, that's basically it. They dap it out, you know, and they move forward. After this happens, Keely ends up popping up. And this is where it gets messy. She's definitely not excited to see Blue because she had no idea Blue was in town. And if she did know, she probably wouldn't have showed up to this party. She's like, oh wow, whole attention from everybody. And Tokyo's like, not me. <laughs> laughing I'm like I live for Tokyo so then she's like well hello there to blue and ask him what he's doing in the in the A and he's like well first of all the, the the first question here is where's my son she's like he's at home with his nanny I said hold on <laughs> are these regular regular folk why do they have nannies and I'm like mm -mm. you did not leave your little boy at home with the nanny so you can go to the club. Oh, she said with his nanny that you don't pay for. And I said, honey, if Keely can tell me what she does for a living, that she needs or requires a nanny, because as far as I'm concerned, we don't know what she does for a living. Therefore, she should be a stay-at-home mother. You know, there's no there's no use for a nanny if if I don't know what your career is. You know, I'm I'm confused. <laughs> so. He basically pulls her aside and he's like, let me talk to you solo dolo because I don't think this is a conversation for everybody. And I agree with this. It's not. But this is love and hip hop. So the cameras is going to roll with you. You might as well talk in front of these people. They're going to see it on TV anyway. What I'm noticing in this scene is that Keely does not have the same energy with Blue that she had with Bocce. Because when she was talking to Bocce at her office, she was rude and she had an attitude and all this. But when she's talking to Blue, she seems to be on a little bit better behavior, you know? So, Keely's like how all she ever hears Blue say is he wants to see his son, he wants to see his son, but he never does anything about it. He never does or takes any steps to actually see his son. The way she talks about Blue, talking about he's a non-factor, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna assume, okay, I might be wrong, but I'm gonna assume she don't pick up that man's phone calls or answer his texts because the way she talks about him, talking about he's a non-factor, like... That doesn't make any sense. If he's saying he wants to see his son, I don't get how you guys are not arranging it. Like, I don't know. I'm not there. We're on the outside looking in. But Keely seems to be a very spiteful person. So I wouldn't be surprised. Based on how she's dealing with this, the whole situation with BB Gun. Based on how she's dealing with the situation 
with Bocce, with Carly Red and Tobias. Like, she's spiteful. She's a, she's a bad mind person. So, I'm gonna assume she's not answering the man's phone call so that he can see his son because he wouldn't have to pop up in the A from Miami to check the bitch, you know, and a surprise check at, at that. She had no idea he was gonna be there. Blue starts to page Keely and he's like, from the last time I saw you, what I said to you was, I'm not gonna do this in front of my child. And I said, this grown man right here. <laughs> You're really not supposed to argue in front of the baby, you know? And so he said he's not going to do this in front of his child. And then he tells her that she had a problem with Xavier, their son, being around his girlfriend at the time because his girlfriend was a stripper. So Keely, of course, says that was never a discussion. There was never any talk about him being around certain people, blah, blah, blah. And I don't believe that. I believe every word Blue is saying, okay? Blue has no reason to lie. He has no reason to pull that out of his ass. He has no reason to make that up. And then Keely says, basically accuses him of not being consistent. And he's like, I've been a consistent father for 23 years. I said, hold on. <laughs> I said, hold on, 23 years? How old is Blue Da Vinci? <laughs> You've been a daddy for 23 years? His child is almost as old as I am. Wh what? This man's old enough to be my dad? I'm stunned right now, because he looks damn good. So, I'm thinking he's like only in his 30s, you know? He must be old as hell, but he look, he looking like a daddy, oh God. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, Mr. Blue. You kinda cute. <laughs> So, I was really shocked that he has a 23 year old child, like, that's wild. Anyway, because Keely is a petty ass bitch, when Blue says, look, we need to be adults about this, we need to at least try to be adults about this, she said, I'll think about it. I said, bitch, <laughs> what the fuck do you mean you'll think about it? You are an adult, why don't you act like one? What do you mean you'll think about it? She's literally acting her shoe size, I can't. I think Blue leaves the party. So then Keely and her friend Deej, the one that she hooked up with BB Gum, head back to the party. So once they return to the party, she congratulates Tokyo and she starts to introduce um, the girl that she's with, Deja, as BB Gun's girlfriend because she's messy and she knows this is going to get back to Sierra, obviously. So she was calling Deja her sister but then she decided she wanted to throw shade at Carly, talking about, like, how you and Tobias are, like, brother and sister or some bullshit like that. And so Tobias, Carly Red, and uh, Tokyo are all like, WTF? Like, <laughs> what? And they start getting at her, and then Carly Red is pressed, obviously, because she's like, like, why are you even doing this? Like, what, you don't know anything. So then she says to Tobias for him to clear it up right now. Do you mean you have anything going on? Have we ever blah, blah, blah? He says, absolutely not. Carly said, there you go. You heard it here first or whatever. And she's like, so stay the fuck out the business. <laughs> and I was like, bitch, yes, you better tell her. Like, I really do not like Keely. Like, if I lived in Atlanta, it would be an on-site ting, okay? Because that bitch needs to be, she needs a good bopping, okay? So Jock is over here talking about, can we just please keep the peace or whatever? And then Carly Red basically tells him to shut up and she's being rude to him and telling him he needs to like hang out on the street with the homeless people outside the club and all kinds of, <sighs> I don't even know you guys. It was so messy. And this is what I'm saying. This scene was literally so long. I was like, when is this scene going to end? <laughs> so of course, at this point, Sean Garrett, Carly's date, her boyfriend, whatever. He is unimpressed because Carly and Jock are not dating anymore, but the way that Carly's acting and throwing shade towards Jock, it's like, you still like him? Like, are you mad? Like, you hurt? Like, come on now, sis, do better. And so this is where the going gets good, baby, okay? Miss Sierra. <laughs> Sierra shows up and she has the person that she said was Bocce's girlfriend. Her name's Crystal. She brings Crystal with her and she's introducing Crystal to everybody. And she's like, this is my friend Crystal. Ain't she bad? Like blah, blah, blah. And she turns to Keely and she's like, this is Kay Bocce's girlfriend. <laughs> and I was like, this is messy, okay? And But when she said that, I'm like, little does she know, the girl sitting beside thing is BB Gun's new fling. So, of course, right away, Keely gets mad because K is supposed to be her boyfriend, even though they're in a little spat right now. And so she tries to throw shade back to Sierra, and she's like, oh, well, this is Deja. She's BB Gun's girlfriend. And so she's like, she's dating BB Gun. And Sierra's like, BB Gun? Who's that? Who's that? I don't know BB Gun. <laughs> and I was like, bitch, 
that is how you be that is how you be unaffected you know that's how you be unbothered you know whatever when she said that Keely's trying to get slick at the mouth again talking about some oh BB gun is the same person that helps you get that necklace that's around your neck or something like that and when she said that <laughs> Sierra took her back and she swung that shit and hit Keely bloop, right on the head, bitch. And I was like, yes, bitch. And then, of course, that's when the bra broke out. Security's going in there. Security's in there like swimwear. They're not letting it get too hectic. But Keely got scalped, honey. I don't know what was going on underneath the... Hey, I don't know what was going on under, I don't know if it was a wig, and it was underneath it, it was looking a hot fucking mess, she was like balding under that girl, it was not okay, <laughs> it was a mess, you have to watch the episode, Jock in confessional, A1, okay, he has A1 content in his confessionals, he is so funny, so he's like, is it just me, <laughs> or did Sierra just send her purse all the way to the west coast, Bring that thing down through the Midwest and plant that thing right on Keely. forehead. I was fucking screaming. <laughs> I was dead. I said, John, please relax, sir. I can't handle this at my old age. I really can't. It's too much. And then he finished that off with welcome to Atlanta. <laughs> Listen, Atlanta seems like a fun place to be. I can't. Sierra loves to use her purse as a weapon. Like, she's forever using her purse as a weapon. It's like in movies, like, when an old lady is gonna get mugged or something and she takes her purse in and hits the perpetrator. That's Sierra all day. Anyway, there's a big brawl breaking out. Everybody's looking a fucking mess, especially Keely. And Sean Garrett and Carly Red are, like, on the floor. I think Carly Red might have tried to fight. I don't know what happened. But... The whole thing was just, it was just out of control. Tokyo vanity is getting escorted out by the damn security. They're rushing her ass out. It was a mess. Kebachi was pissed because this is his club. He's like, get them bitches out of here. It was a mess. So in the next scene, the guys briefly meet up to gossip a little bit. And the girls also meet up to gossip. Bachi says, Sierra won, Keely zero. <laughs> so... Sierra won that fight. Bachi admits to the guys that he is indeed seeing Sierra too. Not Sierra, Chad, uh, Crystal. He's seeing Crystal as well. And then he says that him and, and Keely are actually a rap. He's done with her. Deuces. Don't want nothing to do with that bitch. Blue says that he got a little bit out of character, but he's just trying to see his son. So it is what it is. At the girls' conversation, Sierra ends up apologizing to Tokyo because obviously she didn't want to ruin her event, but she did. She managed to do that single-handedly. Crystal says that her and Bachi have been on and off for three or four years now, and that's just how their relationship is. You know we don't be dealing with them light switch ass relationships. No. And so Tokyo actually opens up to the girls about being a virgin and says to them you know what even if I start giving him nookie now it's not gonna make a difference if he's being unfaithful he's gonna be unfaithful regardless you know me giving him some pom pom is not gonna make him any less faith any more faithful than he is right now so is what it is I can always chuck that deuce up real quick so the next scene Scrappy and Bam are in the uber and he asks her who has she told that she's pregnant and so she says like just my mom like I thought we weren't telling anybody and of course she's now curious as to who he told so he say he says that he told Stevie and so um she's like oh well do you think he'll tell anybody and she's like he's like no he won't tell anybody and Jock definitely won't tell anybody and then she's like hold on wait you just said Stevie like you didn't say anything about no damn Jock and he's like Stevie and Jock and then she's like hold on like who else did you tell if you told them to like and so Scrappy is like beating around the bush at this point because he told his mom but obviously his mom is like she talks way too much. <laughs> so he was very hesitant. He's like, you know, this person doesn't even really count because it's a family member, blah, blah, blah. I told, I told Mama Dukes. And so at this point, Bam is not upset, but she's also not impressed either. She's like, she really, she's had complications with her pregnancies before, and that's actually why she's kept this one on the super low. Um, but she's about four months when they were filming. 
that's why they didn't really want to share with anybody because if she did lose the baby that would just be a lot of I'm so sorry for your loss and you know that sucky stuff so anyway Bam shows up to what was supposed to be a dinner date with just herself and Mama D but then Rashida and Tammy were there as well of course Bam surprised because nobody was supposed to be there nobody's supposed to be here <laughs> except for Mama D and Mama D picks up this bag off the ground of like it was like a gift bag that you would bring to a baby shower so it had like pink and blue and yellow ducks on it <laughs> And obviously Mama D had that bag the whole time. So Tammy and uh, Rashida obviously would have seen it. So this scene to me was a little obviously forced and fake. Even though their reactions looked genuine, I still feel like by the time they found out that Bam was pregnant in this scene, they already knew what was going on because why the hell would Mama D have a freaking duck bag? Like, you know, anyway. So she starts, she puts the bag on the table and she starts taking out like onesies and stuff and like showing cute baby stuff. And Bam is like, Mama D, like, what are you doing? Like, seriously, what are you doing? Like, you know what I mean? And then they're asking her if she's pregnant <laughs> for Ernest and she's like there is no more chocolate left in this chocolate factory and I was dying I'm like Mama D is so out of control like she's out of control obviously at this point Bam has to say something she has to be like well I was gonna wait to tell people but since Mama D is over here basically snitching on me I might as well tell you guys I am having a baby I am pregnant blah blah, blah. and then they were super excited for her and of course she makes Mama D promise that that conversation that they're having there right now with her telling them she's pregnant is not going to leave these four walls and race a day because like I said she had fertility issues and she doesn't really want everybody up on her snatch right now so Sean Garrett shows up at Carly Red's shop you know Carly Red's store one of the stores she got and he's pressing her about the whole Tokyo party he's basically telling her like you're a grown-ass woman you guys need to act grown you guys are acting like children it's embarrassing and then during this conversation she asked him about their relationship and I think he asked her what she wants and <laughs> she tried to say she want a ring baby I said bitch ain't nobody give me your, your ass a ring okay nobody you're gonna have to buy a husband like Kenya Moore bitch <laughs> you ain't getting a husband like no no it's not happening anyway when she tells him that she wants a ring, he basically straight up laughs in her face like, ain't no ring, bitch. I ain't getting you nah, no ring. Nope. Not, not this guy. <laughs> nope. It's not happening. And I was like, this is just embarrassing. This is motherfucking embarrassing. That's what this is. So he tries to tell her that he's putting her on punishment and he tells her that she doesn't know how to act. And she basically says he's right and tells him from this day forward, she'll be on her best behavior. And we are here at our final scene. So Tokyo meets up with Tobias and just like the last time she paged that ass, she came in guns blazing. She didn't waste no time. She got straight to the point. I like people that get straight to the point. Don't beat around the bush. Don't waste my time. Get to the point. I'm out of town. Why am I hearing that you're out eating taco with some hoe? At first, Tobias was acting lost in the sauce. Like, he was acting like he didn't know what she was talking about. But then he's like, oh, first, the car first Carly Red, now I'm out eat talking with some hoe. You just think I hear fucking everybody, blah, 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 basically, like, saying, like, she's doing too much. But then he admits that he was out eating tacos with his ex-girlfriend because she asked who was the bitch, who is the girl you were out with eating tacos. So he's like, it was his ex-girlfriend. Chow, first of all, that's a no-go. You ain't going out with no damn ex. There's, there, no, that's just a no fucking go. You have the audacity to go out with your ex while I'm out of town? Oh, that's, there's going to be hell to pay. Best fucking believe. So, right before, I actually, when I'm watching the show, I pause it a lot. So, I had paused it here once he said that. And so, my thought process was, unless somebody from that child's family has passed away, has died, there's literally no excuse to be linking up with your ex for fucking tacos. And if somebody did die... Why the fuck are you guys going out for tacos? Somebody please enlighten me. There's no need to go for tacos. A phone call will do. A text message. You know. 
But y'all don't need to go for no fucking tacos. No. Tacos ain't bringing back the dead person, so it's irrelevant. It's unnecessary. So once I unpaused the <laughs> once I unpaused the show, he actually said her granddaddy died. The girl's granddad died, and so he was just comforting her or whatever. And of course, Tokyo gave zero fucks, okay? Zero. Zero to hero. She gave no fucks. She said a shoulder to cry on is a dick to ride on. I said, what a pro verb. <laughs> I said, oh my, like that is some truth, honey. You cry on the sh Yeah, that sounds pretty fucking accurate. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, um, Tokyo wasn't having it. She's like, no, no, you, you, you're not going to do that. So then they start arguing. He tells her that she's insecure because she's a virgin and she thinks that he's out here fucking everything. He's like, I'm not insecure about a goddamn thing, okay? <laughs> Ain't no insecurities over here, baby. He says, I'm that bitch. I was like, oh, okay, Tokes. <laughs> All right, if you say so, girl. <laughs> and then, um, of course, like most <laughs> would, he was laughing because he thinks this shit's funny. And personally, I thought it was funny myself because he probably really did just go out for tacos. You know, it was probably not anything more than that. And guys don't think the same way girls think. So a lot of the times, if you're dating somebody and you're tripping for no reason, your is going to laugh at you and he's going to think it's funny and you're not going to think it's funny. And he's going to be laughing at you because he feels like you're tripping for no reason. And I think that's actually what was happening here. But Tokyo was dead serious and she wasn't about to play no games with him. And so at this point, she goes in to smack him in the head. So she goes in this first time and security comes and they make sure that she can't do anything more than that because he's sitting on the park bench. And then she asks him, what does his new hoe do? <laughs> so... She so Tobias ended up telling her she's a flight attendant, you know. And Tokyo said, You fucking with a hoe that slang peanuts? She yo bitch, yo, yo new hoe got a boss. You ain't fucking with a boss, bitch. She's doing all kinds, and I'm just like, oh my god. I fl I didn't know flight attendant was such a horrible job. Well, <laughs> Well, I didn't make it to the whole flight attendant thing. I was still in training, but I didn't know it was such a bad job that people would be downing it. I mean, you get to travel the world for free 99. Like, why is Tokyo coming for the he, She called her a spirit hoe. <laughs> um, in reference to Spirit Airlines, which is like the cheapest airlines I think you could fly in America. Is that right? Spirit's always in controversy with like American Airlines. She tries to slap him up again, but of course security interferes again. And by the end of this, she was telling him that they're done. And she was walking away. And he was saying, Toe, you tripping, like you're tripping, whatever. He was still laughing as she's walking away. And she was telling him that she will beat both of their asses. I said, oh my gosh, this is, uh, this is getting ugly. <laughs> so... Tobias might be out here with a black guy for going out for some tacos. In, in the defense of tacos all over the world, tacos are so fucking good. I don't blame Tobias, okay? Maybe the bitch paid for the tacos herself. You know, I'm not going to turn down tacos. I love tacos. Tacos are bae. So, I get it. I do. But it could never be my man. My man's not about to tell me he was out eating no tacos with no bitch. You ain't going out on no, no date with no female. I'll tell you that right now. Anyway, you guys, that's it for this episode. It was a hot fucking mess, but I will see you next week for next week's episode. <laughs> I love you all, and I'll definitely see you in the next one.